Greetings, and welcome to another Fate Grand Order video. It has been a while, and that's because November was a pretty slow day for Fate Grand Order. What we did get was the Elizabeth rerun event for Elizabeth Brave, and I think outside of that we really didn't get much during November that I can recall. Or if we did, it was insignificant that I don't remember. But we are finally in October, and that means actually not one, but two things. The first is the, the pseudo singularity number three, Shimosa. Now this comes along with uh, several servants and craftings that you can get, and then after that we're also going to get later on in well, in the month the obvious October event for this year, which is actually a pretty interesting one. So first let's take a look at Shimosa and not the servants that we can summon, shall we? So as before, uh, let's see, recreation party, what is it? Interesting, so you need to have a certain something, a new material, uh, repression shop operate, huh? Uh, oh, for those, okay, so if you didn't, if you weren't playing when Musashi first appeared on in the game, you can do a trial quest for three rare prisms. Uh, training system, once again, multi-HP guards, we already have that one. So yeah, basically nothing too difficult, but let's go into the really important stuff of this, the servants, shall we? So let's see, summoning campaign, what do we have here? Uh, let's see, uh, raid up servants... Actually, hold on, give me a second. This goes. Uh, where do you go? No, no. Uh, aha, okay, that's where you go. Okay, so first, as you can see, we got Musashi, we have Archer of Inferno, Assassin, Paraiso, and some other guy. So, this is obviously relating to part of the story. They're, they obviously all play part of the story, which is why they don't have their real names revealed. But we're about to go and take a look at them, shall we? So, first, let's take a look at Musashi. So when it comes to single single target saber, she's actually one of the strongest out there. She has a triple buster deck, which does not help her MP generation much, which kind of sucks. But she had to have some type of weakness. But she does have a, a unique skill, which is this: doubles the number of hits for no more attacking, reduces the damage by fifty percent, but then increases own damage by a certain amount depending on level. Essentially, depend uh, when you use this, you will always deal the same or more damage. So this doubles the number of hits, so if you reduce your damage by 50%, that means you're doing, instead of one, you're doing two hits, which deal a total of 100% damage. So you always do the same or more damage whenever you use this skill. It does have a six turn cooldown, which is a bit long, even at max level, but you do increase the damage substantially all the way up to, let's see. So we have our attacks here, so normally it'll be busters, so you'll be hitting four times instead of one, and then her R-Scots can hit six times instead of three. But yeah, uh, this is a skill only she has, that as far as I can know, and you really want to level it up if you want her to actually launch her Noble Phantasm. Then second skill, ignores invincibility and increases own buster performance. So as you can see, yeah, she is basically designed to absolutely destroy one target and one target alone. I really, there really is nothing else to be said about that skill. Then third skill, grants self-invincibility for one turn, increases on critical shot generation rate, and removes on buffs. So a little bit of survivability, a bit of utility, so not too bad, but what makes her really strong is her Noble Phantasm. Deals damage to one enemy and increases own MP damage once her activates first, from 20 to 60%. So yeah, because of how MP damage is calculated, increased MP damage it goes at the very end of the chain and that multiplies everything else that comes before it, which includes type card, uh, let's see, it was attack, uh, type card effectiveness, and then I think this one here goes at the very end. So yeah, this skill is actually very hard hitting. I have a friend on my list that's got a fully maxed out Musashi, five copies of her, level 100, 10 on everything. And she can hit a single target Lancer for around 140,000 on her own. So if you need a single target Saber, she is definitely not something you want to skip out on. I'm not sure I want to pull Hunter, but I will end up pulling on one of the banners for later because I do want some collection servants. But now let's move on to the next one here. So Tomoe goes in the Archer of Inferno. So she is actually the third of the only that we are getting in the game. Pretty interesting, isn't it? So anyway, let's take a look. Double Arts, Double Buster, okay, nothing too special there. So Demonic Magic, this is essentially the same skill that both Ibaraki and Shuten Doji have. It's the exact same skill, only a little bit weaker. I think Shuten Doji is the strongest. So it increases party's attack and increases on MP damage. Not of Kelly Battle increases on Critical Star Absorption, increases party's Critical Star Generation. So a two for one and the last return, so not a bad support skill right there, especially if you partner her up with either Lancers or Riders or anybody that generates Critical Stars. 
and grants of guts one time, five turns to get some max HP. So this is basically a last ditch effort to survive something that's coming your way. The good news is she is an archer, so she might be able to survive battles against sabers more than shooting Dodge or Ibaraki. But let's see, Noble Phantasm. Deals damage to one enemy, reduces their critical attack chance by 20%, inflicts burn with 1000 damage for one turn, and inflicts fire status on them, which increases burn damage by a certain percentage. Ho ho ho. Now, this is actually very, very nice. Because up to now, damage over time skills have really not been that useful, if we're perfectly honest. They were useful one time against Safi when he had insane defense buffs, and that really was about it. Now, this is actually going to start a trend where people, where other servants are going to get buffs to their normal phantasms or skills, where they're going to increase the damage of their damage over time effects that they apply. Starting with her, then, uh, what's it called? Uh, Kiyohime will get one on her own normal phantasm as well, I think. And then Shuten Doji will get one for Poison. And I think somebody else would get one for Curse. So basically, if you can get five copies of her, that'll increase the burn damage by 300%. That will... This is the increased damage. So that means this will deal 4,000 instead of 1,000 over five turns. That's 20,000 damage over the duration. And if you couple that up with any other servant that adds a burn damage, like, say, Elizabeth Brave that we just got, or Kiyohime, then you can actually start stacking up the burn damage right there. And then all you gotta do is stall and watch him burn to death. So all in all, not an outstanding servant, but her noble fantasy increasing burn damage is actually pretty unique and something you might want to consider try experimenting with on particularly difficult bosses. Now, also, Mochichuki Shiyome, uh, assassin, of, assassin Paraiso, I think was her called. So let's see, an assassin. We're going to get plenty of assassins during this sub-singularity, obviously. It's Shimosa, it's Japan-oriented, obviously. So, arts and quicks, nothing too outstanding there. Chance to steal one enemy's MP for one turn, 100% at level 10, very nice. If you partner her up with anybody that increases um, ally buff, so debuff success rate, like I think uh, Ramses, then this is actually a very nice stalling skill. Increase on arts performance returns, 200% chance to inflict curse 500 damage for 3 turns to enemy when normal attacking. I'm not sure if you can stack the same curse multiple times on one target, pretty sure you can't, so this is essentially just a way to increase damage a little bit, but it does increase her own art performance for three, three turns. So that I hope we'll get her Noble Phantasm ready. Now, third skill. Evasion and charges on MP Gaj. Okay, then. An interesting combination right there. We haven't seen that before, so not too bad. Pretty useful. Unfortunately, the long cooldowns make it a little unreliable for constant usage. So let's see. Summon Omen of the Great God Ibuki. Seals their skills for one turn. This is actually not too bad. Reduces their critical attack chance and deals damage. Okay, so not too bad considering she is a 4 star. So yeah, getting multiple copies of her is not going to be easy. So 900% damage and 10% critical rate down. So bro, not a too of an outstanding servant, unfortunately. Kind of sad, but she does have this skill which increases her arts performance. And this one is also arts. So she can... So she is another arts-based assassin. Interesting. So you can pair her up with Ryogi Shiki and Shuten Doji for a triple arts assassin goodness, and we can see what we can actually do with that. But we are not done yet. Okay, who is this? Uh, and lastly, this guy. Who's this guy? Also, an Inshun, some type of Lancer. A large focus on quick cards there. Let's see. So, for, first skill ignores evasion. Very nice. Increase on critical star generation rate. Not too good right there. Considering he's only got three hits on his cards, eh, I guess it's something. Then let's see, Seeking the Truth, increase on quick performance, there we go. Increase on mental debuff resistance for three turns. Okay, not too bad, a way to increase his damage. Seals one enemy's MP, just flat out seals it, okay, and reduces their defense by a decent amount. Okay, so a supporty low star Lancer, not too bad. This should give us an option from Kuchulain Altar, or um, Romulus, I think his name is. So let's see, no phantasm. Increase own attack, own critical damage, self insta kill immune for one turn, grant self evasion for one time. Okay. So this is not this isn't a damaging ability, this is a buff and star generation rate. It's a very interesting skill here. It does have a lot of good stuff, but unfortunately because it is a buff. Oh, but 
he is a three star, we can hopefully get him to five and that increases his attack by 50%. Increase on critical damage and then if we can pair that up with some of his own other skills. He does not have any type of critical star gathering skill, so... Eh. Well, he is a three star Lancer, so what were you expecting? But that is not it. After she mows up, which is something that's actually not told during in the game just yet, we are getting another summoning banner. And during that summoning banner, we're going to be able to pull on four servants, uh, Shuten Doji and uh, Minamoto no Raikyo. We're going to be able to pull on them again. But we're getting two new servants, the first one being Kato Danso here. So another four star assassin. So let's take a look, uh, let's see, HP 11,000, that's not too bad for an assassin. Double buster, double quick, okay, so let's see, what do we have here? First skill, own quick and buster performance by 3%, by 30, up to 30%, not too bad, it's actually fine to leave this one at level 1. You actually don't have to level it up too badly, that's not, that's nice. Grants one ally, evasion for one turn, and increases their critical star generation rate. Okay, so we have a supporty assassin here, from what I can tell. And grant one, grants one ally invincibility for one turn and increases in critical shot generation rate. Okay then, well, she is definitely the type of supporty assassin. So let's see, deals damage to all enemies, deal extra damage to demonic enemies. Up to 150%, so yeah, who knows how much that would be, but... An interesting assassin servant here, very supporty orientated. And let's see, star generation, star absorption, MP charge per attack. Well, we'll see how she can actually work if we actually, we actually pull her. And lastly, we have Yagun Munenori. Uh, another four star saber, Jesus. So many four stars this time around. Okay, so let's see, arts focused, okay, from what I can tell. Let's see, first skill. Increase on arts performance, definitely arts focus. Own critical star absorption for arts cards. Increase on debuff resistance by 100%. Okay, so this, these two put together, if you can get both of his arts cards and maybe somebody else, he might pull his weight. We'll see. Grant self evasion and increase on attack. Okay, but it's only for one turn. Oh dear, that's not nice. And reduce on enemy's attack and increase on MP generation rate for one turn. Oh dear, he is like a one turn miracle saber here. Deals damage to one enemy, it's also arts. 900 damage, resist the attack. Okay then, so... A arts saber, who would he pair up with nicely? He could pair up with Lancelot. And who else? Um, Ryogi Shiki, the extremely limited servant that very people have, maybe. But yeah, I'm not sure on this guy, but we'll see what we can do with him. So yeah, so those are the Shimosa servants here. So Miyamoto, Tomoe Goze, Mochizuki Chiyome, also in Inshun, Kato Danzo, and Yagyu Munemori. Nenori, there we go. So that's, those are all the servants we'll be able to get access to once uh, we actually finish Shimosa. Now that's Shimosa itself, but hold on, I think, am I missing something? No. The craft engines that they're adding to the pool is nothing special. But, now let's talk about the servants and the craft engines for the October event, which is at the end of the month. So this is going to be the, the release of Osakabe Hime here. A 5-star assassin, that's another arts or, and quick-based assassin here. So let's see, what can she do? So let's see, increase on defense, further increase on defense, increase on debuff resistance. So a very defensive skill. After interlude, uh, uh, increases party's critical damage, okay. And increases her defense by a significant amount more. Interesting, so use this along with a very high critical star team and you can really deal damage there. Let's see, charges one M on allies MP gods, nice. Increase on critical star generation rate, okay. Another supporty assassin here. Reduces one enemy's defense for a turn. Ooh, very nice, that's a very strong defense reduction buff right there. And removes her buffs. Very nice. Okay, so she is definitely a support assassin, but what can she do on her own? Let's see. Anti-fortress of increases party's max HP, increases party's defense by 20% for three turns. Okay, so we're going to assume 2,000 because he is a 5-star, getting multiple copies is very hard. And then after rank EX, which is after her strengthening, increases party's quick and buster performance. Very nice. Okay, so after her interlude and after her strengthening quest and interlude, she becomes a very solid uh, assassin support for either buster or quick. 
for either Buster or Quick uh, based assassins like Jack or uh, King has Old Man of the Mountain. So when it comes to supporty, very not interesting there, a five star supporty assassin. But we're not done yet, let's take a look at the, at the craft ends that you'll be able to pull. So this one that you probably saw a lot of fan art of on the internet, increases MP generation and increases critical damage. So you put, you give this one to somebody that relies on critical damage to increase their MP gotcha, like Jack the Ripper. And you can definitely get some very strong uh, uh, usage out of this one, especially if you can get all five copies. But this also increases the Halloween drop up from something there. So yeah, anyway, moving on. Then we have Phantom Knight, increases drop rate of something and increases buster performance and MP generation rate. Interesting. Buster performance. So you obviously want to give this to somebody that doesn't get that type of buff on your normally on your team. But it is a four star, three star? What is this one? Four star. MP generation rate. Doesn't seem like it's too particularly good, but for collection purposes, uh, a reality is there with a stereo, so interesting. And then we have from Wonderland, increases Buster and Crit performance by 6%. Yeah, really not too outstanding there, but it is Anne and Bonnie there. You really get to see uh, Anne there uh, without too much covering her up. And it increases the drop of what I can only assume are some type of snow cone there. Now, this aerial drive is the one you can actually get from the event, or one of the ones you can get from the event store. So let us take a look. Increases Buster performance, MP damage, and start out with MP at 50%. Okay... So this combination right here, Buster Performance and MP Damage. As I mentioned earlier, MP Damage goes at the very end of the calculation, which multiplies everything else which is type card advantage and attack up. So this can actually increase significantly a servant's Buster type MP Damage if you actually build the everything properly. So yeah, this one is definitely worth getting and experimenting with. It may not be the strongest ever, but it's definitely worth getting your hands on. Then the second one is Golden Wings. Increases MP damage and increases MP generation rate. Okay, another good one. Incre flat out increasing MP damage and MP generation. So you can actually get th give this one to anybody that deals massive damage with their Noble Phantasm. Hey, there's uh, Summer Nitocris right there in her little Majet outfit. Interesting. So let's see, increase MP damage and MP generation. Give it this anybody that can deal that, like Jack the Ripper once again. And this one is actually not too bad either. And lastly, nostalgic form. Increases defense and increases buster performance. Eh, pretty lackluster, honestly. But if you just start a game, it can be somewhat useful. But we're not done yet. So here is the servant that we are going to be able to get during this event, or actually one of the two servants, Mega Ellie Chan Mark I. So as you can see, she is an Alter Ego, so if you did not get lucky during the Seraph event and get any Alter Egos, this is your chance to get your hand on two of them, actually. So nothing particularly outstanding in their stats. MP charge 0.9 per attack, that's actually not too bad there. Uh, generation rate, uh, let's see, they're Lawful and Good, interesting. Completely opposite to Elizabeth, which is Lawful Evil, or, it's, or Chaotic Evil. Anyway, fully buster orientated, as we can see there. So let's see, Innocent Kaiju. Grants critical stars every turn, increase on defense for 3 turns, okay, not too bad. 10 critical stars every turn with 30% defense up, not too bad. Charges on MP gauge and deals 500 damage to herself but can't kill herself, so up to 20% MP charge. On a pretty low cooldown, that's not too bad actually. So not a bad skill there. And removes on defensive debuffs, increases on MP damage and increases on critical damage. Okay then. Increases MP damage by up to 60%. This is not a bad skill at all, even if it's only for one turn, unfortunately. So let's take a look at her. Let's see. Oh, Soy Metallic Demon is anti army individual. Deals damage to one enemy, removes their defensive buffs. This happens after the damage, very much like uh, Ibaraki and uh, uh, Medea. Normal Medea. And then reduces their defense buff for three turns up to 40%, which should be 40% because we are going to get all five copies of her. Hopefully, and I say that hopefully because it's not just one Mecha Ellie Chan, it's two Mecha Ellie Chans. Yes, you can get two of them. It will require quite a significant amount of farming, but yeah, you can get two of them. And they have the exact same skills, both of them. Like identical skills in every sense of the word. 
So yeah, with this you can finally have your five Elizabeth team. With no more Elizabeth, Elizabeth Castor, Elizabeth Saber, and these two on the team, a full Elizabeth team. Now, let's take a look at... And I think that is it for the October event, actually. I think we took a look at everything. Uh, no, that's Osaka, Osaka Behime. Oh, and she will get a Archer version two years from now for, for the summer event, so yeah, fun. So yeah. So, Osaka Behime, a very nice and very utilitarian support assassin. Trick or Treat can be very strong if you give it to the appropriate servant. Phantom Knight, not that useful, unfortunately. From Wonderland, you just run it for the drop rate. You get a few of them if you put something on. This one, pretty nice. You can probably increase somebody's buster damage and P with a significant amount. This one's actually not too bad either, increasing MP damage and MP generation rate. This one, uh, not too not too good. And the Mecha Ellie Chance, which will, yeah. Now you have a pretty big sprite on screen. So there we go. So that is everything that is coming in October. Now, there will be some challenge quests uh, for the October event. And let's actually, hold on a second. Uh, let's take a look at, let's see, main info. Let's see, what we want is... Oh yeah, and all of these people, all the night classes get extra bomb points during Shimosa, so that's not too bad. And actually, let's go take a look at it. We want to see if there's anything particular... Uh, main quest, Shimosa. And let's take a look at um, the final boss. Is there anything per... God damn... Talk about annoying ad in the Spanish for some odd reason. Anyway, let's see. Final boss, final boss. Who's the final boss? Uh, let's see. If, let's see. Uh, just a, interesting. You can only use the support servant in this battle solo. Interesting. And the support servant. Okay, so you need to use her. A essentially maxed out Miyamoto Musashi to. Uh, solo the Kojiro battle, and there's no type advantage here. So it becomes a cha a fight of luck. Interesting. Anything else up here? Uh, ah, here we go. Let's see. Is the only available support you have it in battle? Okay, that's not too... That kind of sucks. We wanted archers there. You must have the NPC. Yes, we learned that at the beginning. Has a human trait. Okay, let's see. First battle. No more attacks. Remove your servant's buffs. Okay, so that kind of sucks. So you want to debuff his attack. He has a permanent mental debuff immunity. Okay, so so you this is basically a all-out attack of attack versus attack. Here we go. Then at, after his first life bar, okay, you're gonna to want to remove that if possible. And then on the second last life bar, we're gonna shield damage taken from enemies' normal attack. So you want to use normal phantasms against that. Against an MP gatherer buff on removal. Oh, nice. Reduce the damage from normal attacks by 100%. MP not affected. Uh -huh. Bypass the shield buff by using the service normal phantoms to do the damage. Right. Okay. So that's exactly what we thought during this battle. It's basically, it's a damage race without any gimmicks like uh, buffs, I think. Yeah. Without any buffs or debuffs on the target, you need to be able to uh, basically rush this guy down, whoever it is. And he'll... Amakusa Shiro, again? You again? Uh, why is it always you? I, but you're an Avenger this time. Interesting. Wait, is this who I think you are? Yep, it is. It's always him. Let's see. Has a permanent mental immunity rebuff. Will gain a critical up damage for five turns after you break his first life bar. Pills from party gates. Star gatherer up buff for five turns. Okay, then. We'll gain an MP damage up buff for five turns. Ooh, that kind of sucks. And star absorption, right. So this is another interesting battle, but it doesn't seem particularly hard. Just bring, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you bring Bebe onto this fight. She will destroy whoever, whatever uh, Avengers is in front of them. And I think that is pretty much it for any game. Oh no, and this one. Um, let's see, you must have, let's see. No more time of a chance of inflicting debuffs. Debuff a party member with defense down and max XP down. Ooh, that kind of sucks. First up, a deplete. Your front party has a high chance of receiving an MP damage down debuff. That means drains MP got to 20%. Right. It is a caster, though, and, and so your riders will be able to do, should be able to destroy this, no problem. 
And I think that's generally it for any gimmick. So yeah. Shimuzu is actually coming tomorrow. So hopefully this tells you if you want to pull for Musashi or not. She is a pretty strong servant there. But you do need some strong support on her. That's because you do have Buster Performance. And you do have MP Damage. But she does not herself have any type of attack up. So you need to provide her with attack up in order for her to deal maximum damage. So anyway, thank you for watching. And we will see you next time. For when we talk about... Uh, that would be November. I don't think there's anything particularly strong in November. And then for this year's Winter Wonderland quest. So anyway, later.